All right, hi all, Mr. Hayes here. Um, we're going to go through and we're going to chat through quadratic equations. We're going to give the first kind of background on this. Um, we'll spend two days on this reviewing, uh, getting very good in reviewing all the um, skills we learned back in the chapter R in terms of factoring and solving, and then um, go on to some applications in a couple of days. First major idea, which is why factoring works, is the zero factor property. What the zero factor property says is that um, if A and B are complex numbers, now remember complex doesn't mean that it has to be, have, has to have an imaginary component, but it might. Um, basically says if I'm multiplying two numbers together, so here A and B, um, then either, if A times B is equal to zero, either one or both of these factors have to equal zero. Um, that's the only way a product can equal zero is that if one of the factors equals zero. And so that allows us to say this. Now remember, for quadratic equations, the form of a quadratic equation is something where you've got a squared term and you've got a squared variable term and then you may or may not have other parts. Um, the general form of what they end up talking about, sorry, trying out a new mouse, my deepest apologies. Um, Sorry, my apologies. Um, so anyway, so what you're going to end up doing here then is you're going to end up factoring this out. So this would factor out again. What two numbers multiply out to be 12 that add up to be negative 7. So you've got negative 3 and negative 4. So that's how that would factor out. Now the difference from what we're doing then to what we're doing now is that we've got this equality side up here. Um, so what we then would do is um, because of the zero factor property um, up here saying that either one of these factors have to equal zero, so either this equals zero or this equals zero, then that would allow you to do set up two equations. Generally when you do this you have two, an equation for each of your um, the number, well, we'll talk more about this later, the number, the, the degree of your equation, so in this case degree of 2, usually will lead you down to how many um, solutions that you look for. So here we've got two different equations, so obviously then here, what number minus 3 is equal to 0, so that would be 3, and then this one here, it would be 4. And then depending upon how they ask you to solve the question, put the answers and generally this will be the case. You probably want to need to put it in set builder notation. Um, and so you're going to say the answer is 3 and 4. Okay? Again, something you guys did back in Algebra 1. Shouldn't be anything new or exciting. Straightforward. Now, of course, then the other question is, now while factoring works, and it's a wonderful tool, and you can probably catch a lot of... Um, questions like this. Um, as we talk about in class, real life is often messy and real life doesn't have really nice numbers. Um, or sometimes you just don't see it and you want to make sure that you've got, um, you don't see what the factor is supposed to be. And so there's one way that will always work and that's called the quadratic formula. Um, sorry, getting back into use of doing this, so I'm going to do this on the fly. So this is the whole x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And again, that's for ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Make sure you have them all on one side of the equation. Make sure that you have them in order. Make sure that you don't mess them up, et cetera, et cetera. Because it does matter where you pull the a, the b, and the c from. Um, so with that being said, please remember that you can use about three or four different songs to memorize this. There's the Notre Dame fight song. Um, there is the Pop Goes Weasel. Um, I forget some of the other ones. Um, but however you need to memorize this, you do need to memorize this. So don't come into the reality check on Friday saying, I didn't know the equation. No, you know. Okay? Just go through and just memorize it. Or sing yourself the song. And there's plenty of places out on YouTube that you can find that too. Um, Okay, so here's an equation that we'll end up needing to do this for. Obviously, um, some of the numbers that you may have aren't going to be this simple, but this is going to be a good basic, just kind of how it works. Um, 
Um, oh, and by the way, before I forget, I've said this numerous times about all sorts of things. Probably one of the best ways that you can memorize this equation or any equation actually is to actually write it down before you use it. So if you're just referring back to it, um, if you're just referring back to it and looking at your notes and just copying down from there and just using it, you're not going to pick it up as fast as if you actually write it out like I'm about to do. Now, the first thing you need to do, remember, is get it into the ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero form. And so what we need to do here first is move everything onto one side. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Please be careful not to add this into the x squared plus 3x squared. So it's just going to be x squared plus 3x plus 3 is equal to 0. And then what I would do, and I mean this with all sincerity, is I would actually go through and if I, I was reading this for the first time since Algebra 1, I would probably actually go through and write out, all right, so I'm going to use x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a. Um, so you're going to use that, and then from there, you're going to plug in the parts. a is 1. B is 3, C is 3. So in that case, I'm going to just go through and write down, okay, it's the opposite of B. Now, again, please remember that if you always have to change the sign. That's why I say opposite of B and not negative B, because negative implies that it's always going to be the negative, whatever's there. It has to be the opposite of B. So if it's a negative, that's going to be positive, it's positive, it's negative. Plus and minus. Again, I apologize for my handwriting here. I'm getting used to this new pen mouse that I've got. Um, plus or minus um, the square root of, wow, that was bad, um, b squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 3, all over 2 times a. Now, I would, especially if this is negative, you may want to get into a habit of putting this squared term in its own set of parentheses because the biggest mistake people make are with signs on this. Okay. Yes, I know that there's a computer or a calculator program that might be able to type this in for you. No, I'm not going to expect you guys to use that because I'd like to see you write this stuff out because um, many of you are proving to have... Um, these organizational issues would be a nice way of saying that, so I need to see you actually write this stuff up so we don't mess up. Um, so x is going to equal. And now I would say focus on this part up here. Oops. I would say focus on this part here. And then this part down here is, to, and you know, you can do those in two separate steps and then worry about getting fancy. Don't try to be a hero and do everything all at one shot. Okay? And so this is going to become 9 minus 12. Okay, so 9 plus, uh, sorry. I did too much. So I get 9 minus 12 which before would be a problem, not so much anymore. So we're going to get to this point now. Now I have x equals negative 3 plus or minus 3 to the square root of negative 3. And I'm going to clean that up. See, it's just like class, right? Plus or minus square root of negative 3 all over wow. 2. And so then this isn't quite your final answer. But now, again, before this used to be a problem, you can't take the square root of negative 3. Oh, contraire, you can now. It's going to become a. What is it going to become now? It's going to become. So you got negative 3 plus or minus. So you're going to be able to pull the i out. Square root of 3 all over 2. Now they're going to expect you to write this in complex standard form. And so when you do that, you're going to need to go through and say, okay, break this down into a real part. So I'm going to break this down into negative 3 over 2 plus or minus 
i square root of 3 over 2. And that is your answer. So, um, there may be times you're going to have to calculate that out for decimal, but again, that's going to be something else that your calculator is not going to be able to do for very much. I want it in complex standard form, no decimals, leave it in terms of rationals. Um, or not rational, but fractional parts, um, and that should be it. Now, this, that will also happen if you end up having to get irrational answers. Break it down into two parts so everything's all nice and set. I think that's about it. So, for tomorrow, what you're going to be working on in class, actually, what you're going to be working on today in class, um, will be this. Page 119, 13 through 25 odd, 45 through 51 odd. Um, also, check podcasts. Or 1.4.2. Go over a couple of other extra things there just to be safe. Um, so, these will probably get better as we go along. Um, thank you so much. We'll see you in class. And talk to you later.